Welcome to Classic Car Garage, the classic car restoration how-to television show. <laughs> I almost got caught back there. My wife was right behind me. She wanted me to clean out the garage, but I got away just in the nick of time. We're changed into our work clothes here, and we're ready to get started again on our project car, our 68 California Special Mustang. I'm here with Jerry Choate in our shop today at West Coast Classic Mustangs in Canoga Park, California. And Jerry, first of all, how you doing? Very good, Jeff. How are you doing? Great. You've got a tape measure in your hand. What are you up to today? Well, what we're going to do is di do diagonal measurements across the front end of the car just to make sure that everything's square. Right, and we were a little suspicious about our project car due to the fact that this uh, inner uh, apron here is a little bit buckled. Yes. And sometimes this can be an indication that the car has been hit up here and this has been pushed back and of course if this is shorter than that is our fenders won't line up and of course our doors are going to have tight seams over here too so it's exactly important, it's important to, to know what the measurements are what's the first thing we're going to measure here what we're going to do is going to go off of a main reference point so we're going to use that uh, screw right there we're going to go off of this hole here okay check the measurement there and then do it again diagonally on the other side now do we know what this measurement should be or we're just making sure they're the same no we're just using a reference okay they should be the same Okay, we're at 59 on that one. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to go right in the center of this hole, and you're back there. And we were at 58 and 7 eighths. So these are not precision cars, and that's well within tolerance, right? Yes, yes it is. So that tells us that the car may have been tapped a little bit in the front end, but for all intents and purposes, these are roughly the same uh, distance from the firewall, and therefore everything's going to pretty much line up the yes. way it should. Okay, now that's not the only measurement we want to do, right? No, we also see a problem here in our shock tower. We have a little bit of a crack in our shock tower down there. Right. And, and I just want to make sure that the towers are in good working order. Okay, now this crack is nothing to really worry about, is it? No, as long as the shock towers are not bent inwards. Okay, now what would have caused a crack like this? A lot of different things. First of all, if it was missing, which this car was, there's braces that come from the shock tower up here to the leading edge of the firewall. Mm -hmm. And in the cars that were shipped overseas, they used what was called an export brace. Right, those went from here over to here. The Monte Carlo bar, though, went up into this area, right? Right, went straight across this way. Okay, so it's a good idea for us to put these export braces back in the car, do you think? Yes, definitely. Okay, so we're now concerned with what the distance is between these two shock absorbers, and how do we know what that number is supposed to be? Well, you can call up your local frame shop and they'll have all the specifications and numbers but it's supposed to be 33 and a half inches from center to center right computer databases these days can hold numbers for uh, cars all the way from the present to way back when exactly okay let's see if we're looking at 33 and a half here I'll grab hold right. of this end for you and we're gonna put it right there in the middle and we are at 33 and a half okay excellent so we're right on so that's gonna tell us that uh, we're pretty much all set here to go ahead and prep this out and uh, paint it, but before we do that, we've got a little bit of repair to do on both of these inner fenders, don't we? Yes, we do. On this here, what's happened is the nut that holds the uh, hood hinge has pulled away. And on this one too. Well, actually, that one there, all three of them are pulled away, plus we have a little bit of rust right there. Okay, so what happened here is probably the hood flew up at one time yes. and extended these things out. Now, you can buy the whole panel for this from California Mustang, which we did, but you don't have to use the whole thing, do you? No, you can splice in just what you need. Okay, so we're just going to cut the top here and over there rather than to replace the whole thing. Correct. Because everything else is in pretty good shape here. Yes. And as far as this little buckle goes here? That can be repaired. Okay. We're just With a gonna... body hammer and dolly. Right. And uh, again, it preserves the correct number here as well, too. So if anybody's concerned about having the factory stampings, they're right here on our project. Exactly. Because if you replace that, with a reproduction apron, it's not going to have the correct number on it. Right, and it'll be quite evident that we that someone has swapped this out. And of course, it's always desirable to have as much originality with the car as possible. Yes, it is. So folks, there's a little lesson for you. When you are evaluating a project car, bring along a tape measure because that really is going to tell some really good tales about whether or not your car has been in an accident or not. Now, when we come back, we're going to give you a lesson in stripping paint that is. Plus, we're going to take you out to a grand event. We're going to take a look at some prancing ponies. Ferrari at the Concorde Elegance in Los Angeles. All that when Classic Car Garage continues. Well, as I said, we're back here in the shop to show you something that almost any home restorer can do, and that is strip the 
paint off of the sheet metal on your project car. Now you can save yourself between six and eight hundred dollars doing this and this is really quite simple. The first thing you want to start with of course is safety. As you can see I'm wearing these neoprene rubber gloves here. Now these are heavy gloves. These are not the sort of ones that you would get in the supermarket for washing dishes because this stuff is heavy duty and this will eat right through those thin gloves. You get these in a hardware store or a paint store. Secondly of course is eye protection. Always wear your safety glasses because once again this is very very caustic and you don't want this to splash into your eyes. It could really cause some serious problems. And of course what it does to your eyes it'll also do to bare skin. So wear a long sleeve shirt. Now I didn't come prepared here today and this is real TV so I borrowed Tony's shirt today and I want to thank him for letting me wear his shirt and by the way Tony I'll wash it before I give it back okay now one of the first things that you want to do here when you're stripping paint is to get yourself properly outfitted now once again we don't have ultimately what we'd like but we're going to show you using the things that we do have here you want a pan like this and make sure it's a metal pan now because a plastic pan this will eat right through so you want a metal or even a glass pan will do so we're going to go ahead here and just pour a little bit of our paint stripper in the pan and you don't want to pour in too much you don't want to pour in more than you're going to need. Secondly, you're going to need some sort of a brush in order to spread this onto the sheet metal. Now, once again, we're using a little brush like this because we just have a very small surface, but for large areas such as this door, you're going to want to use a pretty good sized paint brush. You're going to want to have a uh, a uh, putty knife like this on hand, also some steel wool to clean things up and you're going to want to have a newspaper as well too, and I'll show you how this comes in handy in just a moment. Okay, so you, you're all set here and you're in a well-ventilated area or outside. This paint stripper works best at warm temperatures and of course always have a fan going or do it outside. First thing you're going to want to do is to get some paint stripper on your brush and you're going to want to spread it in a smooth layer just like this. I don't know if you can see what we're doing here but we're putting plenty of paint stripper on the metal here and we're going to cover it by brushing in just one direction. You don't want to brush it back and forth because what that will do is it will cause some of the elements in the paint stripper to not work properly. And again, you want to layer this up pretty heavily and only work with an area that is no more than about two feet in diameter. And you want to let this sit there and let the stripper do the work, not you. So that's a pretty good layer of paint stripper and we're just going to now wait a couple of minutes and you'll see that paint begin to bubble right up there. Well, according to the manufacturer's directions, we're supposed to let this paint stripper sit for anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes, depending upon the temperature in your garage or wherever you happen to be stripping paint. We've let this sit about 30 minutes and I think we're just about ready to see if the old paint's going to come off this glove compartment door here. It's really simple. All you need is a putty knife in one hand, newspaper in the other so that you can clean the putty knife as you go ahead and take that paint off. So let's see how well our paint stripper worked and pray that I'm not made a fool of doing this. All right, so you just take the, take the putty knife, there's nothing fancy about this, and just go ahead and start to, to just make strokes like this. And you can, as you can see, the bare metal is starting to come up there. And where the paint is a little, where it's a little uh, stubborn, you may want to put a second coat on. But you just keep doing this over and over again, go back and forth until you get all of the paint off. Really, this is the best way to remove paint for the home hobbyist. I don't recommend sandblasting because unless you know what you're doing, the sandblast process will heat up the sheet metal and you can bend or, or warp that sheet metal or you can pit it. Really, most restorers, good restorers, I think, use this method to strip paint. It takes a lot longer, but for me, it's the best way to do it and it's not as destructive to the metal. And as you can see, with just a little bit of effort here, how nice and clean this door is coming. Take, just take a look at that. Now that is nice and that is just with that little bit of work. And you can imagine now, if you do this over an entire car, this is gonna be more than just a couple of hour job. So let's go ahead and get all the rest of the paint off here, then we'll show you what to do next. 
Well, that looks nice and clean, doesn't it? We not only got all the paint off there, but we got all the paint stripper off as well, too. Now, that's ultra important. We wash this down with dishwashing detergent and water because, of course, if you don't remove all the paint stripper, and I mean remove it completely, when you go to prime this and paint this, you're going to ruin a perfectly good paint job because that stripper has a life of its own. So as you can see, this is something that's very, very simple to uh, do. It does take a little bit of time, and of course, you should always use safety. Always keep uh, some water handy, keep lots of newspapers spread around, and by all means, wear old clothes. And gee, Tony, I'm sorry about your shirt. I'm going to have to, it looks like I owe you a new one here. All right. Now, when we come back on Classic Car Garage, it's Jerry's turn. We're going to be working on restoring some of the trim on our car. Don't go away. There's more Classic Car Garage right after this. Hey, welcome back to Classic Car Garage. Invariably, when you're stripping paint, like I was in the last segment, one thing is always going to happen. <laughs> Your nose is going to itch. Best piece of advice I can give you, don't scratch it. OK, uh, Jerry, we've got a lot of parts here from our Project Mustang. And these are the sort of things that anyone can clean up if they've got the time. And the best time to clean up something like this is when there's cold weather and climate weather outside if you live back east or when your car is in the paint shop, right? Correct. Now, this sort of thing really doesn't take a lot of skill, does it? It just takes really just a little bit of patience and hard work. Yeah, a little bit of elbow grease and time. OK. Let's start with our instrument bezel here. Now, as you can see, ours has seen better days. It's uh, a lot of the, the chrome type paint is off of it here, and this is very faded. What do you suggest we do with something like this? Well, if the chrome wasn't faded, we can go ahead and just tape off the chrome and go ahead and paint the black with either a satin black or some kind of model paint. But because the chrome on it is bad, the best thing to do is just replace it. Let's go on to our next piece of business here, Jerry, and that is our gas cap. All right, now this is a little heavier here, and as you can see, it's seen better days too. What do you suggest we do with this? Well, something like this, we're going to have to clean. These are not available anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to either clean this up with steel wool or have it rechromed. OK, and that's what the inside of it looks like right there. Just probably put this in a parts washer? Yes. OK, so we clean up a little bit of the grime. OK, so a little steel wool ought to clean this up just fine, right? Yep. So there's nothing fancy about that at all. Just take it and uh, just begin to rub a little bit there. And you can see how that is really, really cleaning up nicely. And of course, it'll take a little bit of work in this area here. And this should be an adventure right here trying to paint this back, shouldn't it? Yes, toothbrush to clean it and then go ahead and paint it. And then what you do is you actually take a uh, rag with lacquer thinner and wipe off over the top. And what that'll do is it'll just get the top edge off mm -hmm. nice and clean and the bottom will stay black. OK, great. So that's how you take care of this black insert on the running pony right here on a gas cap. And finally, these are the unique tail lamps that are uh, that, that come with the California Special or the Shelby's. These Correct. actually were uh, tail lamps they used in Thunderbirds, weren't they? Yes, they were. OK, are these sequential? Yes, they are. OK, now once again, we have a pretty bad looking bezel here. There really isn't much we can do with this, is there? No, not really. Plus, you're missing a couple of pieces here. There's pieces that are broken off. It's really badly pitted. Mm -hmm. So even though this is a very difficult piece to find, we're going to want to try to find one and replace it. OK, and as far as these lenses go, these are in pretty good shape. Is there any sort of polish you can, you can get to clean up these uh, plastic lenses? Yes, there's a couple of companies that make plastic polish. Also, I found that you can go to your local aquarium shop, and they make oh. an acrylic uh, plastic cleaner, and right. it cleans them up really nice. And that's a, probably a more cost-efficient alternative yes. to something that's specifically made for that. Right. Now, as far as the inside workings to these, uh, how do we take care of the reflective background and so forth? What you can do is on the backs here, these do not come out, OK? So what you're going to want to do is make sure that your electrical is very well protected. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and, and use soapy water and like a 3NM uh, scrub pad. You want to clean everything really good, get toothbrush, get in there really good. Okay. And they make a, quite a few paints called uh, Cast Magic and so on and so forth that, right. that really depict the, the proper colors. And this wiring harness re really, uh, although it is taped here, uh, I would think that you'd want to maybe see if this, this works. And if it doesn't work, I would imagine this is just a replacement that you can get quite easily. Actually, these are not available anymore. They aren't. No, but you want to make sure that it does work before you put it in. And it's very easy to repair these. It's no. not that difficult. OK. And if yours is completely shot, well, <laughs> you just get on the phone and see if Tony at Memory Lane has something like this for you. Because this, again, was something that was found in the Thunderbird. There were a lot of Thunderbirds out there. Yes. So if, if you were lucky, you may find this. So really, all in all, there's nothing fancy about cleaning up these parts. It just takes a lot of time. A lot of elbow grease. All right. 
Well, that's about all we have time for in this segment here on Classic Car Garage. Stay tuned because there's more coming your way next with a new product segment.